Welcome to Co-op Mode, round 83. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Friends Unite. And tonight you have the dynamic duo. Myself, Todd Oxtra from beautiful Savage, Minnesota, in the middle of chaos that is moving, uh, which is not, which is my least favorite game at the moment. Joined by my favorite co-host, Novaland. That is Mr. Mark the Canardian Carabin. How are you doing, my friend? I am pretty good. I'm just getting over a cold. Uh, I did several tests. It is not the Rona, uh, but it it made for a nasty weekend because it went straight through the whole house, uh, including a sick toddler, which is never fun. So uh, if my voice gets a little raspy or I start to mute my mic a little bit, uh, I'm still still feeling that a little bit, but um, I'm happy to be here. My goodness. Mark, if you look behind me, you will see... I'm the proud owner of a copied version of the Castlevania NFT that Konami sold. <laughs> what do you think about that? I, uh, I think that's wonderful. I think right-click save as is the downfall of all NFTs. Yeah, I don't own it, folks, but you know what? You'd never know it because who's going to verify the blockchain anyways? Let's be honest. Exactly. Uh, you don't get the, the was it, hexagon uh, Twitter oh. symbol. Todd, you're missing out. I know. I need like a monkey that's smoking a cigar that is wearing like those star glasses. That's I mean, it. that's all I'm missing, Mark. Come on. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Maybe we should play a game. What would be your NFT? And that sounds like the worst game ever. So let's <laughs> not do that. Goodness. Oh, well. Um, let's see. Since well, it's been two weeks since we joined. So let's catch up on, you know, one of our favorite topics. And that is buy, rent, return, Mark. Oh. I noticed there are some big anniversaries for some games this year in 2022. Right. So we got Street Fighter, the original game, not two, which everybody knows. Street Fighter, the original, not too good, but it, that's what started the whole franchise. Right, right. 35th anniversary. Mm-hmm. Kingdom Hearts, 20th anniversary, going back all the way on the PS2. And mm-hmm. Kirby, which we'll talk a little bit later, on the 30th anniversary on the good old NES. Mm-hmm. So, Mark, with the buy rent return of these franchises that are persevered, not going anywhere, I assume. Uh, they'll stick around. Uh, at least Street Fighter and Kirby actually have new games coming that we've heard about. Yeah. Street Fighter Six, Kirby, uh, and the 3D Adventures, whatever you want to call it, The Last of Kirby. And then when, yeah. Kingdom Hearts got a cloud version on Switch. Yay? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so before we start, I have to clarify. Is this these games or franchises? I think it's a franchise because okay, franchise yeah, well, okay. their first yeah. efforts were not always considered like the, the that, best. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that that would that would definitely change my answers. I believe. Uh, so, oh man, okay. How am I going to go with this? You know what? You'll see what I'm playing later, but this is going to give a little spoiler for that. Uh, I I am gonna go with Kirby for my buy because Ooh, I am controversial, sir. For Forgotten Land, and uh, there have been some good Kirby games. I very much enjoyed the uh, the DS. Uh, was it the Rainbow? Oh yeah. Road well, there was a couple, Rainbow. right? Was there was Rainbow Curse, yeah. and then there wasn't there like a wasn't there another one? I believe so. But uh, yeah. there, there have been some very fun, unique Kirby games. They they push the envelope. They do weird and different things with that character. And while I enjoy when they do those weird things a lot of the time, I am also very excited to see just like an action platform kind of game with Kirby Forgotten Land. So I'm going to buy that. I'm going to buy Kirby and get pumped for that game coming out uh, at the end of the month. Um, I'm going to rent Street Fighter because of Street Fighter 2. I played the hell out of that game. That was uh, one of my favorite fighting franchises growing up, and I played a ton of fighting games. Um, I've not really been into it aside from like Smash in recent years, but like my younger teenage days and even younger than that were like heavy, heavy fighting games. And Street Fighter was, was always a go-to favorite of mine. So Street Fighter is going to be my rent 
and sadly, Kingdom Hearts. I really wanted to love Kingdom Kingdom Hearts because I love Disney, and it's so convoluted. It's so crazy. If you love Kingdom Hearts, all the power to you. But I just can't follow everything that happens in those games, and uh, I I enjoy it's it's weird. I enjoy hearing about Kingdom Hearts and like people explaining what's going on and trying to keep people up with with the story and everything and it's it's like the the best acid trip dream you could have with with disney characters and and weirdness thrown in there um but it's just it's not a game for me but i love hearing about it so sadly i'm going to return that but i still will watch youtube videos of people explaining and playing those games the real question mark is who has the best fan fiction of all these games 100 kingdom hearts I, right I, answer I, it has to uh I, I would say they're right up there with smash brothers for the best fan fiction uh has to be has to be uh, not not that that's like not that i i go out of my way to read a lot of video game fan fiction or anything but like i have to imagine that that kingdom hearts would have the best has to be i think you're right yeah. um yeah, the good picks, my friend. That I think you've got it nailed. Um, let's see. For myself, ooh, this is a hard one because um, I really want to love Street Fighter more than I do because I love Street Fighter Two and every and, and they've had so many cool iterations. We had the um, you know they continued on with the two D pixel art for quite some time. The Third Strike series really did some beautiful art and animation, really cool. Adding more characters. I mean, how many versions of Street Fighter Two were there? Turbo Championship Edition. I mean, like I didn't know the difference between all of them, but people did. Um, and and they they were really represented well on console when they first came out on the SNS mm-hmm. and the Genesis. Um, then you had like that weird um, EX version, which was polygonal, which was weird. Yeah. And then Street Fighter was like gone for so many years and finally brought back with four which blew people's minds and yeah it's a really cool series um there's anime there's a bunch of different things action figures uh so yeah uh but it feels like it's kind of been on a downturn lately so i would say for myself uh, street fighter is going to be a this is going to be this is going to be controversial it's going to be a return because i just am not good at the games and i just don't love them anymore I get that. They're hard. If you're a fan of Kingdom Hearts or RPGs, like Street Fighter is the like that. That's an easy return because they haven't been. I don't think they've been as good as they were in like the Street Fighter Two peak era. And I'm hope like maybe Street Fighter Six will bring it back and just be like firing on all cylinders and stuff. But like, I get that. I get that choice. Yeah, especially with five being a uh, console exclusive to PlayStation yeah, yeah. and then on PC. So I know we got an announcement. I don't know if they're going to change or do anything else, but I guess we'll see how it is because PlayStation doesn't have an exclusive fighter. Uh, mm-hmm. Xbox has uh, Killer Instinct and then obviously Nintendo Smash. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, then my rent is probably going to be Kingdom Hearts only because... I love that series for the first two games. I didn't play all the GBA, the uh, the odd games, the spinoffs, the card <laughs> mechanic game, then the re-releases, which then included all of the uh, the, the little um, movies and everything like that. Right. I was so excited for three after such a long gap, and then three came back, and it felt like. They forgot they were on new hardware. They forgot how to do voice acting. They had bad direct voice direction. And it just really turned me off. It's so, so funny because it's what I expected on the PS2 hmm. is what came forward in a better looking, you know, package, but still felt very dated and which is a shame. Maybe the Japanese version is better just because they did better with the voice direction. But um, it's a shame because they have some really good voice talent making those games. So it's weird. But yeah, it's such it's so un- hard to understand what the, the game is trying to go after with the story. So convoluted, like you have to watch all these things. And then I hear Mickey talking about things. I'm like, Mickey, do you even know what you're saying anymore? And Donald, I'm like, these are not things Walt Disney would even recognize. So I I like the fact that they tried something unique and different from a Square Lens JRPG. 
but I don't know if we're going to be done with uh, Kingdom Hearts, honestly, at this point. So it's going to be my rent. Um, but it has a lot of nostalgia for me, and I like the Disney characters and what it brought forward. But really, my buy is going to be Kirby because when you got a kid who loved Kirby, the Wii with uh, Kirby's epic yarn and the games that have come out since, uh, my son really enjoys the Kirby games, regardless of how hardcore of a gamer he is. And he's actually mm-hmm. really excited about this new Kirby game. Um, and there's a co-op mode in this new Kirby game, which I don't know what it means and what it is, to be honest. But if we can play it together. Um, yeah. I think that's really cool. I mean, Kirby is one of those series. I look, Mark, I looked at the list of games. Kirby may have more games or appearances on Nintendo games than anybody else. I mean, there is a crap ton of Kirby games. There's at least two to three Kirby games per generation of mm-hmm. every system. It's just crazy. Yeah, it's it's wild. And that's what I, I meant with like they throw Kirby at so much stuff. And I, I think it's you know, partially because he is kind of a – I'll say kind of bland character in the sense that like, he's just a, a, a puff ball, like a pink puff ball that you can kind of do anything with. It's not like it's an established style that you have to stick to or a, an established gameplay that you have to stick to. You can ins- like stick them on a surfboard and that's the game that time, or you can turn them into yarn and that's the game this time. And you like, you can just do whatever you want with Kirby. And for some reason it always works and it, it's always at least solid, right? It, it might not be like the, the system seller, but it's always at least solid. And uh, yeah, I had a ton of fun with, with the new one. So I, I, yeah, I can't believe it's essentially we landed on Kirby for our buy. It's we so were, weird, like, Mark, but I would say it's also, I'd say it's the perfect game for a young gamer too. And the adding co-op makes it a perfect game to play with a family. So when Finn gets old enough, I think Epic Yarn, if you could bring that game out, maybe gets ported or whatever. We did have the 3DS version, but maybe bring that to Switch and Mm -hmm. and bring it there because I think that's a great game for that. So yeah, Kirby, congratulations. You made us proud. Don't eat us, please. (laughs) What would Kirby be, his power be, Mark, if he swallowed you? Uh, um, Tiredness. Uh, this week, um, sleep, sleep, Kirby just, uh, just, uh, yeah. Um, oh man, I don't know. Sarcasm, uh, probably. So he epic, throw out, epic, he throw out yeah. memes at you and <laughs> break you down to tears because you're you just know, a fool. Uh, just a lightsaber and sarcasm, I think is, uh, is, is the, the power up there. Yeah. What about yours? Oh my goodness, Mark. I think it would be dad jokes. So I don't know how you would Ooh, like, like make it. that a thing. Yeah. And right. I think you and I share a good dad joke and Logan has loved it for years. So I don't yeah. know how that would be. I mean, if it'd be like emojis of jokes or something that you would attack them with, yeah. um, or they'd laugh to death. That'd be a good, you know, ah, so yeah. I don't know, you know, sad trombone, I, uh, you hit them with a, a sad trombone. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, mix up with, um, Oh, what was the, the, uh, hello, sir. Is that the, the insult simulator games? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do some of those kind of mechanics. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. It. Let us know, folks, what your Kirby power would be or what Kirby would turn into you. Uh, of course, Kirby would have a little uh, soul patch with Mark. He'd have a, uh, he'd be a, a ginger with a beard. Yeah. And maybe a lightsaber. That's not labor, a lightsaber because trademark. Right. Yes. A, okay. uh, a power light sword laser sword yes uh very good so then we move on to a question we got from the winner gamer brendan glad to hear you from you i know you're you're doing like dad heavy dad work with the hospital we want your little one to come home soon because i know how 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 just frustrating that can be as a parent seeing a sick kid so we're wishing you well bud yep yep uh i've heard that uh that things are progressing well so I think that's going to happen sooner rather than later. Uh, and for anyone listening that doesn't know, um, not, not quite sick kid, premature, uh, mm-hmm. born, born a little early. So we don't want to give the wrong impression that, uh, that there's a, a, an ill child, uh, aside from just, you know, jumping into the world a little, a little early, totally. just excited to meet everyone. Right. You know, that's, that's it. So, uh, so I think she's, she's getting along well and, uh, there we go. But yeah, I can't wait to hear that or see that, that, uh, you know, everyone's home and, and safe and happy. And, um, 
I, I can't even imagine, man. I, when, when Finn was born, we were, uh, <laughs> I'll say trapped in the hospital because we couldn't leave because that was like the start of everything with, with COVID lockdowns. That was only a couple months into it. And uh, so we were literally like stuck in a room. I was escorted up to the showers and then had to like go back. Like that was my one escape through the day. Um, and that was only for a week. And I started going nuts. Um, so I can't imagine uh, more time in there. I, although they, I, I guess they can leave and stuff now. So that's uh, that's kind of a, a bonus there. But um, I started going pretty awfully shack wacky um, after a week. So yeah, yeah, that's going to be yeah. exciting. Yeah, I I, 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 my heart goes out to anybody that has to go through that. My sister lost a child who spent a year in the hospital and never got to bring him home. So the, the this time there at the hospital with your kid, it's not ideal. It doesn't get the bonding time yeah. you need. So we want you guys to be home soon and just enjoy that ridiculous fun that we all went through because kids are mm-hmm. a hoot and, and, and they make our lives brighter. Absolutely. All right. So his question is, what are some of the favorite games to replay or which games are you looking forward to replaying? I'm currently replaying God of War and find it so good that I'm contemplating replaying it again. Wow, wow. Mm. I uh, went through the same thoughts on God of War. I played a little bit of it uh, to replay it again, and then something else distracted me. I'm the wrong person for this question. I do not replay games. I don't re- read books. I don't rewatch shows. I rarely rewatch movies. Um, I'm 46 years old. My time is so damn limited. I am always on the outlook for the newest, biggest thing that I'm going to love, and it's going to be my biggest uh, thing that changes my life so just replaying things just i just don't have the time to i just mm. there's just too much stuff so um i don't replay things i will rewatch youtube videos because to me that's good enough uh because i just don't have 20 hours to resync back into a game but i'm so excited about god of war so i totally appreciate that excellent uh for me this is yeah two very different answers for this one because my so as far as like what I'm looking forward to replaying, I actually messaged Brennan about this. Uh, well, he messaged me and kind of kind of cursed me out a little because uh, the last episode of Holocron Chronicles was all about Jedi Fallen Order. And just talking about that game, going back and looking up some videos and looking up some beats and that kind of thing because I didn't have time to replay it before we recorded. But after talking about it and after recording it and uh, Brennan messaged me and said, uh, damn it, like now I have to replay that game. And I, I said, yeah, I'm kind of feeling the same way. Like I have to go back and replay that for, I think this will be the third or fourth time playing that, but I, I need to, uh, don't know if I'll, I'll beat the whole thing, but I might just turn it on easy just to go through the story a hundred percent and just kind of really experience that again. Cause the last time I did it, I tried it was more amping up the difficulty rather than playing mm. it for the story beats. So this one might be a story playthrough. I, I I don't know. I haven't settled on that, which is why I haven't started replaying it yet. Plus I've been distracted with some other things, which I'll get to. Uh, but my favorite games to replay and games that I play, uh, I replay the Super Mario games, the early ones. So Super Mario Brothers uh well sometimes dabble in two but it's not my favorite to go back to uh so one three and super mario world are my go-to go back favorite replay games uh if i am just bored and don't know what else to play if i'm feeling like i have been for the past little bit uh of, of kind of in a gaming rut a lot of times those games will get me back and get me out of that rut uh this time it was something different and i'm going to talk about that in a minute but those are the games that I will go back and replay and just it, it they just work. They just get me out of there and uh, and that's what I need. So that they are some of my favorite games to replay and I I have them in so many places that I can replay them on the go or I can replay them on the NES Classic with that controller or the Super Nintendo Classic or whatever it is. So um that is yeah, that's my my go-to favorite games to replay. Fantastic. Uh, I would say I will convert that arcade games. I will go back and play arcade games because that's the whole nature. You just go back, pulse, and you're not completing Pac-Man. Pac-Man, you play two levels and you, you ditch. So there you go. That would be mine. So very good. Let us know, folks, what your uh, go-to games are for replaying if you, if you have those. Because, man, oh, man, we do not suffer from a lack of games. And that is 100% true. So, But yeah. you know what? Chicken soup for the soul. 
Super Mario Brothers for Marky Mark. That's it, man. I that's that's exactly the way to describe it. It's chicken soup for the soul. Like that is, yeah, that's a perfect way to describe that. Great yeah, question. It feels that's, good. That's, it's like a good song, or you know, yeah. it's, it's something like that. It's just whatever makes. It's just and for me, a lot of it is video game music. Sometimes, like the mm-hmm. Mega Man selection menu, love it. Oh, yeah. It's on my uh, Castlevania, all that stuff. Love yep. the video game music. Just pierces your skull and says, "Hey, remember that member berries, folks? Member berries." There we go. Yeah. So uh, now it's time to actually talk about video games, Mark. What we've been playing. My goodness, I'm so excited about this. And this is going to actually go into our bonus round. So mm-hmm. very quickly, we're going to talk about something you have that I've been talking about for a couple of years. And now you've joined the cult. Finally. I've been talking about this so much. And the last episode, so two weeks ago, I said I was this close to getting it and I backed out. Cause there was some stuff I had to do around the house and I did those things around the house and some other stuff will get done later in the spring. And, uh, I'm not gonna lie. It's been a, a rough month, a uh, rough year so far, uh, whatever. So it's, it's, um, you know, I, we, we, uh, we, we packed up my grandfather's place. He passed away a little over a year ago now, but, um, we finally sold the place and, uh, packed it up and, and everything and, uh, walked away from that place for the very last time. And that sucked after, you know, working hard to clear everything out and whatever. And, uh, and so I needed some retail therapy <laughs> and, uh, well, what better way to, to cheer myself up than dropping several hundred dollars on an Oculus slash meta quest Two VR system that I've been wanting for a very long time. And that's how I justified this purchase <laughs> to myself. Uh, cause my wife was all like, just do what you want, get it. I don't care. That's great. And she's been loving it too. So, um, quickly i'm not going to get into every single one of these in detail but very which quickly, which model did you get did you get like the 120 gigabyte standard model yeah, just the basic yeah, okay. standard model uh okay. which is like so when i start listing the games 128 gigs and i still have like 98 gigs free on this so i, I can't imagine needing space unless the games start to get bigger or something like 128's been doing it so far because I have played Beat Saber, uh, Walkabout Mini Golf, Star Wars Tales from Galaxy's Edge, Bait, which is a fishing game, Fruit Ninja, uh, dove into a little bit of Horizon Worlds, um, and checked out some of the other stuff like Horizon Venues. Uh, so Horizon's like Facebook's attempt at the, the the early metaverse kind of thing, right? Where your avatar's in there and you walk around and you can create worlds or go to concerts or do that kind of stuff. Um, I have a few more games on there that I just installed and haven't played. Like there were a couple that you recommended. There were a couple of freebies that I just kind of picked up and installed, but like those ones that I listed were the games that I spent the most time in the last couple of weeks. Um, Beat Saber is amazing. Holy crap. You said Logan's a, a big fan of that one. I can see why. Mark, he does things in Beat Saber that no person should be able to do. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> yeah. Um, my, my Kirby power-up lightsaber is uh, is been seeing some good use uh, in Beat Saber because I jumped into that game and um, it, it, feels, it feels right. I just – I don't know if it's like I've – hearing Sean Capri and his kids or seeing them playing uh, guitar hero and rock band mm-hmm. uh, made me want to get back into the rhythm games. And then my love of star Wars and lightsabers, this is a perfect combination for me <coughs> um, right now to, to get in. And it's, it's, it's so much fun. Uh, Walkabout mini golf is wild. That is one of my favorite experiences so far. If you have a quest to, or a quest, try that out. If you like mini golf, um, it's, it's very immersive, like super immersive. And like the physics is right on for, for like a mini golf experience. Um, it's, it's really impressive. Uh, star Wars tales from the galaxy's edge. I thought I would be putting more time into, but realistically I've been playing beat saber and mini golf, mini golf. So I'll, I'll get back into galaxy's edge, but it's so far very impressive. Uh, but also the only one of these experiences so far that I felt a little bit of that motion queasiness. Ooh. Okay. Of, uh, so, uh, 
by default, that game is a teleport game. So you point okay. you yep. know, your, your mm-hmm. thing and you, you kind of teleport. I turned that off Ooh. and wanted like the full like walk through sure. controls. Mm-hmm. And I think I adjusted the speed a little bit too fast. Um, Cause I don't like, I don't get motion sick boats, roller coasters, rides, whatever you can throw me on. I will go on for hours and not get motion sick. The only time I do get motion sick uh, is when my body doesn't feel what my brain is seeing. Sure. So like the, the Harry Potter ride at uh, Universal every time. Really? Just, That's a fantastic uh, ride too. I know. But and I get motion where, sick, Mark, um, and I was perfectly fine. Weird. Yeah, it's, it's the part where – Okay. And it might be just because I know how that ride works. I may have ruined it on myself okay. because the, there's a part where you're on the Quidditch pitch, I think, and you're like mm-hmm. going forward, yep. but the ride is actually moving sideways. Mm-hmm. And um, there's something with my my balance or equilibrium that I can – my body detects it. My body knows that I'm moving sideways, but it looks like it, it's moving sure. forwards. The explanation that I was given is – because my body picks up that I'm actually moving sideways, but my visuals are picking up that I'm moving forward, uh, it thinks I'm poisoned and wants me to throw up the poison hmm. is the explanation I was given. So I think that's the same thing for some of these VR games. Um, Who told you that, is, Lauren, after you got a new insurance policy? No. Oh, okay. No, that was... Uh, oh, wait, that, that wouldn't make sense then, would it? That, Mm. No, no, she just okay. poisoned me straight up. Oh, okay, that's right there. I will recommend um, one and pro tip because uh, you, you know we had a comment about hey, love the VR talk that I've done before. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I recommend and actually, um, it's it's pretty simple. Um, it's called C bands. They're like pressure yeah. sensitive little yeah. wristbands, and they have like a pressure point that goes on your wrist. I have motion sickness. I wore those to Universal Studios the Disney parks, I was golden. Didn't get mm. sick once. I will wear them with VR on occasion, but the majority of the time I feel okay in VR. So they're like 10 bucks on Amazon. You get two pairs. Um, I, I recommend it. Try it out. I'll have to look into that. And and once I turned off the the like control motion, I turned it back to teleport mm-hmm. mode, zero problems. Good to go. Okay. Um, and I, so I don't know... Uh, what I'm going to end up doing with that one. But uh, yeah, that was the one experience. And and that was like the first time of like jumping into something in VR. So as I get used to maybe being in a virtual world, maybe that will go away, but I will, I I might try the C-bands thing. Um, Yeah, man, this is so much fun. And if anyone has any recommendations or whatever, let me know uh, for games. Yeah. No Vader quest, Mark. Do, uh, Do they give Vader quest away anymore for free or no? No. No. Okay. Vader Immortal. Um, uh, yes. Why there's, call there's Quest? Three, three parts yeah. to that one. Um, basically, I flipped a coin. Ah, okay. I said I want one Star Wars game because you can buy Vader Immortal. You can buy mm-hmm. like the three parts separately or there's just a bundle with the three of them and you save like yep. two bucks or something. Um, and I literally flipped a coin. I said, do I want Tales from Galaxy's Edge or do I want Vader Immortal? Which one first? Because once I finish one, I'm buying the next one and let's go. Um, so Galaxy's Edge won. And uh, once I finish that, I will go into Vader Immortal. I own both. I've not played Tales from the Galaxy's Edge. Fun story. Um, the quest is a perfect thing to have, Mark, when you have guests over. It was mm. like, you got to try this out and pick the experience. So my one friend, one of my best friends, you know, he's been around the world. Uh, nothing phases him. Give him the quest and he tries out Vader Immortal. Climbing up a, a ladder and then looking out messed him up. Like he couldn't deal with like heights, like a sense of like oh, heights. Shit. And it messed him up. He's like, I can't do this. So he'd take it off. But wow. it's, it's kind of cool. And it's like, not that I wanted him to have bad action, but the fact that he felt like he was heights were messing with him right. shows you kind of how immersive this thing can be. Well, that was one of the things with, uh, with walkabout mini golf. One of the courses starts you off on a cliff. So if you're standing up and if heights kind of throw you off, like watch out. 
Cause it is we like I was standing up in my living room and then suddenly I'm on this cliff face and it was like, Ooh, that's something. And like, it's, it is crazy how immersive it is of like how you actually feel like you're on a cliff face for a second. You see all those things of like the plank, I forget what it's called. Ricky's plank experience or something like that. Uh, but like people actually get a plank of wood and they walk on it and you're supposed to jump off and they jump into a TV or a wall or something. I haven't tried that one yet. But well, I don't jump into your TV, please. Uh, don't do it for like it. science. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, man, VR is is awesome, and we're going to talk about. Yeah, we'll go more into later. details um, about like, covering the whole cool. world of VR, kind of where it's at, cool things, things that you may not know about VR. Because um, mm-hmm. now that we both have it, it's not me just talking to the void because it's kind of cool. So very yeah. cool. Um, neat. And if, if anyone has it, um, let's let's meet up in, in Horizon Worlds because that was another fun experience of just ma- meeting up with like random people in there. But I think it'd be way more fun with like some friends. <clears throat> and like I just jumped in with, like I said, with a random lobby and we were just kind of like, there was a boomerang game we were playing and like throwing paper airplanes and stuff and just like hanging out and chatting and stuff. And There's poker, um, there's VR chat, there's all these opportunities yeah, just to be too. – Exactly. Yeah. It's your voice. It's you, it's you doing things. It's, mm. it's, it's kind of just the coolest part of all the things. I mean, I imagine people will do, well, we'll talk about that. Sorry. I'm just getting, my brain is just exploding in ideas. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So before we, we keep going with that, I, I do want to say, and I mentioned this before I played the last of Kirby or sorry, the Kirby and the forgotten land, uh, the, whatever you want to call this. Uh, but the new Kirby game has a demo. It's, three stages i want to say maybe four um a couple of stages in a boss fight basically uh i love this there are a couple of modes uh inside baseball we were thinking about talking about accessibility in games today before we we kind of pivoted to vr and maybe we can talk about accessibility with vr because that's a, a another part of that but um I did very much appreciate the two modes and and to your point earlier like this could be one of Finn's first games because he loved it. I spent literally 30 minutes to maybe close to an hour playing hide and seek and peekaboo with Kirby because when you press the control pad Kirby does different things and one of the things when you press up he waves and says hi. And he did that and Finn waved and said hi back. So that set me off on like, what can we do? So I was hiding Kirby behind trees and like poking him out and then saying hi and Finn would laugh and say hi back. Uh, I gave him a Kirby amiibo. He's been carrying around and going up to people and going hi. (laughs) And uh, so Finn instantly fell in love with Kirby and uh, that like, instant purchase for me just to mess around with him and play hide and seek. So uh, not only is the game really, really solid so far, just based on the demo stages, but also it's cute as hell with uh, my toddler. So two thumbs up for me. I'm very yeah, excited two, to, to play the yeah. full version. Yeah. There's two modes, three, three levels to play. I played it. I played the first level. Um, they let you kind of experience most of the game, which is, you know, you can absorb characters. It's, it's more like Mario 3d world than it is an yeah. open world game because you have levels. You don't get to go too far off the beaten track, which I'm ca- in those games. I'm Mark, I'm just always moving the camera. I'm like, can I go over there? Is there something hidden? Nope, I can't. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I did die once because I thought there might be something over after a ledge. So I'm like, yeah, I died, and I'm like, okay, don't do that, Todd. Um, yep. I got mouthful mode. I was a car. That was kind of fun. It's so hilarious. The uh, what else do you turn into in the demo? Uh, pylon, a vending machine. What was the other one? Uh, very entertaining. Yeah perfect game to play with others i'm not sure how co-op mode works with it um so that's something that's kind of cool to do i'm assuming it's just local maybe not online i don't know more to come on that it's coming out the 25th of march uh 60 bucks um pro tip walmart sometimes day you can go into the store and get nintendo games and day launch games for 10 bucks off so check it out there too if you like the physical games i always say as a family physical is the way to go with nintendo games because you don't have to buy it multiple times you just get the cart although Watch your kids. They'll lose the carts. They'll lose the game cartridge, which Logan did. So there. But yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Um, and I'm 
curious to see what they do with the more difficult mode because that seems like it's going to be more like to get all the stuff you really have to challenge yourself Mm -hmm. um, which is nice to add that kind of like you said accessibility you just you decide how you want to play and that's how you enjoy the game and you can do it stage by stage too so if you're stuck on a stage you can just instantly drop the difficulty down and still get the experience so I, i really enjoy how accessible this is and we're hearing that a vast change from something else that you played. So why don't you jump in? Yeah, let's talk about Elden Ring. This is the game that is apparently like the number three or four Metacritic game of all time. Uh, highly reviewed. It's available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, basically any game system you have. Um, and it is by the creator of Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Bloodborne, Atagi, for you guys who remember that from software game. Uh, Kings Field, all those things. Um, this is a hard game, um, but it is essentially all those games, but they pivoted to an open world, which didn't make it easier. But what it did do to the series, which is a fantasy era series, ridiculously hardcore, difficult, very vague, with a assist with story by George R. Railroad Martin, for some reason, (laughs) not sure why he was brought in, but I don't know what he did. Cause there's really not much story at all in this game. A limited cut scene. laid out some calm, like some, it it sounded like he laid out concepts. Sure. Maybe some character story beat kind of things, but it sounded like it was very kind of a loose, like here's my general pitch. Have fun with it. Yeah. So I'm sure he had nothing to do with the combat mechanics or mechanics of it at all. So no, no map. No, no. Hey, you should add this to the map. That would look cool. No, I, he had nothing to do with that. Uh, he didn't pick so, Ohio? No, 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 no Ohio games. We need more Ohio games or hell Michigan games. Yeah. That's a, that's a real city folks. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you like these type of games, you're going to love this. If you have not loved these type of games, you're probably not going to like it. But the open world could change your mindset on that. The big thing the open world brings into this game series, which is knights and warriors, you select your character class, you can wield weapons, you can have some magic, you pick your stats. The funny part is, Mark, you get like 12 character classes to choose from. In the description for these character classes is as vague and boring as you'd want. It's like, why would I choose one over the other? I don't know. Um, that's part of the, the thing that people love. They don't tell you Mm -hmm. anything, so you kind of just pick and choose. But the problem is people then go to YouTube or GameFAQs or Reddit to ask all those same questions. So it's like it's not like they're going in blind. They still have to go to a resource to find these things out. So it's very like, yeah, the game's not telling you, but you still have to do these things. I don't know anybody that goes in blind and never looks up a a fact or something like that. So it's a very weird idea, and, and they don't apologize for anything in this game. They, they've said this is a difficulty as part of this series. Miyazaki, mm-hmm. the creator, is like, this is what he wants to do. Perfectly fine with that. Don't beg for a, a less difficult game. Don't don't <laughs> expect them to explain mechanics. Don't expect them to understand, mm-hmm. like, oh, this is how you equip things. They don't even tell you how to do that, which is just like, really? You don't, aren't going to clip me, uh, tell me how to equip the, the horse ring to bring in my horse? Nope. And then... <laughs> The way you control things, it's like there's 85 things essentially on your D-pad to select. So once again, in combat, when you're struggling, you can easily make a mistake. So getting back to where I came from, the open world is a good addition in regards to if you run into a boss like a dragon who's really, really ridiculous, and you may not know he's ridiculous until you actually start fighting him, you can run away. And then you can go and kill some scrubs and get your power-ups and level yourself up. Don't be afraid to run away from things because that's how you kind of know you're going to be better. So my class Mm. is an astrologer. I can use a sword. I can use a shield, but my character is more suited to magic. So I have a wand that shoots a couple spells, but I'm limited uh, with your health and your magic with vials of potion. You only get so many. You can choose, though, of your four you get, how you want to distribute those through the menu system. They don't tell you that either until you go to the thing. So once again, the theme is if you have to be led or told where to go, this is not the game for you. Um, But the cool part about this game is, and I was ready to quit. I complained to my son, Logan. I said, I don't like this. It's not for me. It's going to put a lot, take a lot of time to 
to really get good, and that's the theme of these games, get good, which requires mm-hmm. a lot of repetition and leveling up. Some people just put 180 hours into this game, and they love it. Some people, I put 20 hours and barely scratched the surface, and I had enough. So I quit after about 90 minutes. Logan says, what are you doing, Dad? That's ridiculous. So he's gone hardcore into this game series. He loves hard games. That's who he is, not me. I like a narrative story. I like these things. It's very thing. But he said, let me tell you how to do things I'm like perfect okay this is what i wanted same way i played with destiny i had a sherpa someone to guide me and carry me along that is better than me but i still want to enjoy the experience so that's what logan did so mark with logan's help i beat my first mini boss so then along with what logan's help i ended up getting a cool meteorite uh wand and logan's not letting me give up so he's like, he's like pushing me. He's like an athletic trainer. Like, get good, lift oh, that, like do an extra set. So, I would say if you're gonna, if you've never played this type of series before, if you're gonna mm-hmm. play this game, have somebody to play with it. There is a co-op element to this. It's very weird to get there. Um, you can bring in like these weird people to play with you that are like almost like AI, but you can resurrect them and bring them on. So. I would say this game is not for everybody, but there's something for everybody in this game, which is so weird because I was going to give up, not going to give it a try, but I'm weirdly enjoying the experience, but it's really because my son and I are enjoying it together. It's like a right. co-op game with him yep. just enjoying giving me his experience. Like me, I used to do with him. He's having the opposite experience where he's much more, knowledgeable he's much more experienced he even mocked me for the way i control my guy he's like dad you have to use the crab control mark are you familiar with the crab control yeah so that's how he wants me to use i'm like i'm not i've played games for like almost yeah, just 30 say, to 40 years to crab controls not a chance. yeah it's like this it's this weird thing where you have multiple fingers on the front versus carrying yeah. a controller like this it seals yeah. alien to me which no, i get no. it if you're just new but yeah it's very odd so i can't wait to hear in 15 years mark what finn is telling you to get good at because it's a weird experience i can't wait uh, right now that person is my brother oh my brother's a big big dark souls fan and it has been oh geez uh, i didn't know this you haven't talked about this Oh yeah. Yeah. He's a massive Dark Souls oh, fan wow. and has tried to get me into the series multiple times. And uh, we've, we had a discussion this weekend about Elden Ring because I told him I was going to pick it up and then I got the, the, the quest and I didn't cause you know, why would I bother getting something else if I'm going to be in VR the, the, any chance I get to play games. Um, so I put it off and we, we, had a conversation about how much he's enjoying it and uh and he's he's loving it and one of those people is you know 20 hours and i just beat my first boss and they're gonna put a 180 hours into this game and love every second of it and blah 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 um for me it's it's so weird because i've never gotten into a souls game and i've tried several and there's just something about it that i can't get into and I like tough games. Uh, one of my favorite games a couple of years ago was Celeste. I think that was like mm. my game of the year. Yep. And like name a tougher, more frustrating game than trying to get through Celeste, which I stuck with until I beat and I never turned the difficulty down. I never bothered to adjust any of those settings. I played it as is, as developed, as recommended. And I beat that whole game start to finish. And felt good about it. And I love those kind of games like Meat Boy and like all that kind of stuff. For whatever reason, when you change it into 3D or maybe it's the griminess of it or something, there's something that breaks in my brain that I'm just like, ugh, I'm giving up after 20 minutes. And it's like, you know, I get stabbed by one skeleton. And I'm just like, yeah, I've had enough of this. And it, it, I have to get over that because I think I'd enjoy the lore and the games and and all this kind of stuff. And, and maybe... I'll be able to stick with Elden Ring and I'll get my brother to, to Sherpa me like Logan's been doing with you. But there's, there's something and, and Colin and I had a, a pretty good conversation about like, what is broken in my brain that makes me like stick with Celeste and those kind of games when I want to beat my head off a wall, but then I just stick with it and grind through. But when it's, it's, 
and I, I don't know if it's it like, is it 3d? Is it something about, I, I have no idea what it is, but, uh, yeah, not a clue, but that's it. I, 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 I will eventually get Elden Ring. Mark, I would say then this becomes a challenge to you with your streaming, you and Colin streaming, you playing Elden Ring. Oh, there you go. Very simple. A few drinks. Yep. You do stupid things. And just a precursor. I was watching and, and, uh, I'm kind of funny. Oh my goodness. Uh, Blessing Jr. was <laughs> this little clip. Did you see that? There is a hand spider. It's a hand that yes, moves yes, like yes, a freaking yes. spider. And I'm like, what? And he was just, he was just like paused in, in horror and didn't know what to do. And he's like, I'm pushing the button. I say it with Logan all the time. I'm pushing the button and it's not working. So there, yeah, this game is kind of disgusting in some ways. The, the, mm-hmm. the, 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 the bosses don't look good in regards to mm-hmm. a, uh, like a classically well-designed thing. It's like they put extra arms on things. They like make them gloppy. It's it's really yeah, not a just pretty disgusting. game. Yeah. yeah, it's not even a pretty game when I compare that to like other games. It's not a pretty game. It doesn't run fantastic on any console. And it was funny because I was playing on Xbox Series X because I got it from Gamefly. It, the load times compared to PS5 for some reason are 3X the length. Like it takes which is weird. And that's a game where you don't want the load times to be long because you die a lot. So yeah, yeah. that, that could it's be a weird experience thing, because with, with something like Celeste, you're instantly back in. Exactly. Yeah. And fast. That, that for me kind of motivates me to keep going. If I have to wait 30 seconds to get back in and then I die and I have to wait another 30 seconds and then I die and then I have to wait another 30 seconds. It's just like, I'm waiting more than I'm playing and it just becomes a, yeah. Uh, something I don't want to do. So, um, and, and it's five versus 15 seconds. So it's not like a huge amount, but still with today's consoles, it's like five seconds. That's too long. I should be mm-hmm. playing right away. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a weird thing. Um, but to that point, Mark, some difficult games that challenges you and why do you keep playing? And that would be my experience with the next game that I actually got to participate uh, for the good or bad of other people who watched me, which was I participated in the gaming for Guru. This is Bobby Paul's. It's it's in his memory. Uh, it's a charity for autism. At this point, we raised some funds. I donated a Twitch uh, gift card. I I streamed for about two hours. Uh, Hades. So Sean Capri, Quest for Pixels, a lot of other people participate in this. I'm glad we can do this as a memorial for Bobby so he never gets forgotten. And you know what? He would watch me play and say, Todd, you are trash. You are ridiculously, you're so bad. Why Why do you have bad taste in games? Why are you playing Hades? So I played Hades. And Mark, you talked about Hades. I've talked I love about this Hades. Game. I set it down because I'm like, I get it. I like it. I like what the, the studio does. The narrative is fantastic. The whole point is you want to die more so you get more story. Mm Because if you beat the game like my son did very early on, he didn't get half the story. I'm like, I'm experiencing new things in this game after my 20th or 30th death, which is great. Yeah. But I'm not good at this game, Mark. I've beaten Megara. I don't know how many times. But then by the time I'm getting around to her, so I'm like, I'm in this mode, though. I've gotten the mojo flowing, Mark, where I'm like, if I just go in and I get X, I can Mm -hmm. do Y, which is an important part that separates it from a lot of roguelike and roguelike games where you do feel like you're making progress regardless yeah. of how little you make like i'm like oh i got this i love the gauntlets those are cool weapons let me get this and as you go through it you choose how you and you know you you choose how you um upgrade yourself like i want this to be 2x as you do your dash or you do this or you do that which i found just endearing and i really got into a groove and i think i played it for like four hours which I don't play games like this for four Damn. hours, Mark. So yeah. I had a blast. I streamed it, like I said, for 90 minutes. I'm a bad streamer, Mark. I found as I game, I can barely talk. Like I get right. distracted. Especially like, in a game oh, like this where yeah. you're it's so focused because there's so much going on. It's a tough yeah. game to, to, to stream. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It truly is. It's it's like you're just trying to survive. You get through the the each board and you get lucky if you get the right power up what you assign. It's almost like you're specking yourself for every run. Mm-hmm. You get mocked for your performance. You have different things. You've got like a little Medusa type character who likes you, has a little crutch on you. You can give gifts. It's fun. It's a really cool game. I'm glad I got to stream it. It was fun. This will happen again next year. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully everybody can participate and have a good time. And hopefully, um, and I had a couple of people drop by and say, hi, skinny Matt, Lee Navarro stopped by too to say hi. They probably left in, in fear and terror, but thank you guys. Appreciate that. I am. I'm so sad that I did not get to stream. I had plans on streaming both Friday and Saturday. Uh, Friday, I felt like absolute garbage. And then Saturday I was like, maybe I'll stream. Maybe I'm feeling good enough. You think I sound rough now? You should have heard like Saturday. Literally, I came downstairs. We got Finn to bed because he was miserable as well uh, for most of the day, Thursday and Friday. And he started kind of coming around. So we got him to bed and I came downstairs and tried to say, do you want to stream? And I had zero voice, like nothing. And I was like, never mind. Watch Mark die on stream. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then, well, and luckily, uh, Loren was not in the mood because she started feeling crappy as well Saturday. So uh, so we just, we, we decided that it was uh, better to put it off. We I, I think I'm still going to do some streaming and uh, I'll, I'll do it under the kind of the gaming for guru label. Uh, won't be able to enter people that donate into into the the big prizes but i still have some stuff put away that that i can kind of give away as prizes and stuff like that so uh encourage people to, to raise some more money for the autism society so we'll do that once we're all feeling better maybe this coming weekend or something like that and uh i'll i'll let people know through our social channels and everything when when that's happening but um yeah, I really appreciate everyone that that streamed and and all the effort that went through uh, this weekend. That's uh, it, it's awesome. Perfect. Well, that is what we've been gaming, folks. If you have questions about games we're interested in playing, games we got coming up, we've got some news coming about that actually. So we'll we'll get into the news, Mark. But very quickly, okay. um, we keep getting all these awesome announcements about video games, getting TV shows, movies, and things. And we got an announcement about God of War is getting a TV show. Uh, yeah. It's Apparently going to come to video, uh, Prime Video, which is funny because Sony doesn't have a streaming service, so they can essentially be a, a free agent and put their product anywhere. And it looks like Amazon is the winner of that. Uh, the next Sony project we had Uncharted, which Mark, are you interested at all in Uncharted? Oh yeah, yeah. I, okay. I, I, um, I, I love those games, and uh, I, I need to. I, I haven't been out to see a movie in a long time, um, so I, I need to. And yeah, I, I'll probably see Batman first, okay. but I will eventually watch Uncharted. It's it's a fun watch, regardless of whatever it is. It's not a bad movie, which is important. Right. It's not like it's a it's good for a video game. I think it's it's a competent Indiana Jones movie. So uh, don't worry about that. Uh, and then obviously we've got the Uncharted TV series come to HBO Max by the team that made, brought you Chernobyl which uh, let's not talk about anything from that region of the world. Um, but then now we're getting, and obviously, well, and I don't know, the, the Last of Us, that's awesome. We've got the Sonic movies. We're getting a Sonic TV series. And I don't know, you've heard of that. The funny part is uh, we're getting a uh, uh, Twisted Metal TV series that's right. going to Peacock with Anthony Mackie. And it's supposed to be yes. like more of a, a comedy, which might be more like a Peacemaker, which could work. In a very Absolutely. weird maze. But we're getting enough projects that not we're not always going to say, well, video games are doomed. They're going to be doing different things. So we're now getting this God of War series on Amazon Prime. Very little is known. Who's going to be in it? What it's going to be? Will it take place prior to the 2018 game series? Kind of like starting off on his origins. Will we get yeah. the, an adaptation of the 2018 game? Obviously, we've got a new game coming out potentially as we'll talk mm. this year as well so mark when it comes to god of war um that's a that's a game you still need to play yep. and you will play it eventually um Absolutely. but we talk about a tv series a lot of opportunity to build characters tell a story build a mood so when it comes to your thoughts who do you think should play mr kratos i saw jason momoa thrown out today online and I like that one. I don't know how willing he is to shave off his locks or maybe, I don't know, maybe they find a way to change the character a bit and keep, give him some hair or whatever they want to do. But I think, uh, I think that's some decent casting. Um, I'm sure there's some others that, that I'm not quite thinking of, but I, I, like I said, I saw that one. So now it's in my head. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw that one out there. What about you? 
And Mark, the funny thing, we talked about this earlier. You said Jason Momo was on Baywatch. I'm like, I thought yep. he was, but I couldn't remember that. And he did have short hair at launch yeah. on Baywatch. Then he did grow some luxurious locks. So money has got to be a great motivator. It's and you, <laughs> Do you remember that like TV TV commercial he did where he was old, Jason Momo, and he pulled off his, his hair and oh, he yeah. pulled off his muscles? So maybe he would be along with a ride and, and just wear a skull cap or something. That could probably work. Um, I think he'd be great. Um, you know, it's a hard ask because be, is being big an important part of the role or is it the tenor of the voice? Is mm-hmm. it the intensity? Um, and so you think about big folks and their um, capable acting. Now, I love pace, peace, Pacemaker Peacemaker with John Cena. I don't think he's the right character, but – do they dip into the wrestling realm? We had The Rock, right. John Cena. There are some good because wrestlers are essentially actors that punch. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. is. It, do they go that realm? I'm because I'm just I don't know how how many other actors that are big. I mean, The Rock is probably too much like The Rock these days, where it's like it's hard yeah. to see him not being The Rock. So if it's being big counts, maybe going with an unknown would help. Right. Yeah. And somebody yeah. who's got some chops. And I'm going to pull out one that's weird, but maybe it could work. Tom Hardy was huge as hell as Bane. Hmm. He doesn't care what you do to him. He's fine looking horrible, yep. and he's a pretty damn good actor. He gets wacky and weird, kind of like a Nick Cage at times. But he could probably pump himself up and really put himself into this role. So I think Tom Hardy could fit the bill and get yeah. to about – 250 bills if you get my drift <laughs> yeah 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 he's he is good and, and versatile and, and seemingly at least in the past willing to to put on some some pounds and some muscles so that interesting uh interesting choice yeah so let us know folks who you think would be good as kratos obviously a lot of good characters to be in this depending on how they go I don't know how they're going to manage the budget, although it seems like Amazon doesn't scare from a budget like Lord of the Rings and those things. Um, the the You're going to need a creature budget. You're going to have to really do cool fight scenes. Yeah. So pulling those off convincingly is going to be tough, but I love this, that we're getting more of these type of shows. I love The Witcher. I love uh, a lot of what we're seeing. The Cuphead show, Mark, have you watched that yet? I haven't, no. It's great. It's fun. It feels like they captured the heart of it, but adding some layers of like for kids, but for adults on multiple levels. So I, like I think this could be really, really good. Uh, something that I don't think will be really, really good because of multiple things. And that is Star Wars Eclipse. Uh, Star Wars Eclipse, we it was announced during the Game Awards. Shown, it's a, uh, I think it's during the High Republic era. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's done by Quantic uh, Dreams, mm-hmm. and that is not a great thing in regards to the type of game that Disney wants them to make, Lucas Kilms. They want to make an action-adventure type game. Um, and because of that, and because of a lot of drama around that studio, um, apparently it's been said that now they are saying this game will not be ready until 2027 or 2028 because they cannot get talent Hmm. I wonder why. Yeah. Cause the studio is toxic as hell and nobody wants to work there. Um, I've talked about this game several times on Holocron Chronicles. I think we might've even mentioned it here a couple of times. Uh, it's, there's so much wrong with this game and this studio and everything. Uh, just uh, about this, that I, yeah, I would not as, as much of a fan, like I do two podcasts. One's a video game podcast and one's a star Wars podcast. So if you tell me there's a star Wars video game, I should be very pumped about that. And I would not shed a single tear or lose a second of sleep. If I heard this game was going the way of the Dodo. So I, yeah, for me, it's just, I, there's just so much wrong with it that I, 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 I just kill it. Just 
just take the youngling killing lightsaber to this thing and just, just, you know, treat it like some sand people that kidnapped your mother. Let's just, yeah, put it down. It's so weird because they use the trailer at the Game Awards apparently to get excitement and, and recruit talent. Um, I think the gaming development community is a pretty small and tight knit group and they know like Glassdoor or whatever they use, they know what they'd be walking into a studio. I don't think anybody's that naive and anybody that is naive is probably just so desperate for a, a job in the industry that they'll go after it. So, um, they don't, they aren't known for having an engine that would even support this type of game. I mean, there's just so many like red flags that it's like, and Disney and, and Lucasfilm, should have due diligence. They've got money. They can investigate anybody. You know, James yep. Gunn, they found his old tweets. So, <laughs> right. I mean, like come they've, on. They've done so much worse for things that aren't even nearly as bad as the stuff that like Quantic Dream's been accused of, like the, the David Cage and the, the leadership there. Yeah. Um, that There's just so much drama about this game, let alone – like you said, the engine and stuff just not really being set up for this kind of game and them not making this like the kind of game that that this seems to be setting up as like there's just problem on top of problem on top of problem. And uh, if, if you want some better background, I've been pointing people towards uh, Pink Milk, a Star Wars mm-hmm. podcast. Uh, they are the people that, that have headlined the blackout star Wars eclipse hashtag on Twitter. Uh, that is who I go to for, uh, the, the best insight into this and why it's troubling. And I try to keep up on things, but, uh, but I always point people towards, uh, towards that show. Um, and I've had them on, uh, on, on Holocron Chronicles to talk about this stuff too. So it's, uh, yeah, if you want to like look up that hashtag on Twitter to to find out more and and listen to their show, listen to Holocron and and get into it more if you want to there. But like, yeah, just kill this game. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at the games that for Star Wars games that are potentially in development. I mean, there's a long list of cool games. There's we got the Knights of the Republic remakes coming. Uh, we've got uh, Star Wars Hunters if you like that type of like you know more fluffier game. Sure. Uh, we've got the Lego game. We already talked about that. That's got an actual release. It's con gold, Charlie. Calm down. You're good to go. Uh, yep. But no online co-op, Mark. Nope. What the hell? Co-op only. I know. Ah, jeez, oh, Pete's. Uh, we do have the Ubisoft game, which we know nothing about. Come on. Yep. Hopefully, E3. Come on, bring us some noise uh, there. Open. And then we've got some games like Respawn and and, and uh, EA. Apparently, has got more games in the hopper for Star Wars that Respawn's going to be behind. They, they've confirmed Jedi Fallen Order two as well. Yeah, like that so, sequel is a hundred percent happening. Like, there's we're not missing out on no. on great Star Wars experiences. Like, if this one goes away i just i even if this came out tomorrow i don't think i'd play it at this point just because of who made it but like i still don't have faith that even if it does come out it's going to be any good so like just like i said i don't know just just drop it at this point yeah it's it's a weird it's a weird mixed bag i mean it just it just seems like some projects just need uh, you, you know, check the room and just, mm-hmm. you know what? Bad idea. We'll pay a, whatever you paid for the license, Quantic Dream. We're going to part ties, do whatever dumb stuff you want to do. And and let's yeah. let's focus on what's good about Star Wars. And games have been a bright spot for Star Wars, for sure. And we don't want to, to go on a negative. Um, um, but lastly, uh, you know, we, we got surprises. There's a state of play from Sony coming up. Um, and they kind of refine what this is going to be about. It's going to be 20 minutes long. It's going to be around 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern, I believe, or, or 5 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, when you're, reading, uh, when you're listening to this on uh, March 9th. Uh, they basically, it's going to be focused on Japanese publishers. So if that means we get uh, a Babylon Paradise, I think that's that Square Platinum game that nobody wants uh, that's coming no. out. Uh, then we've got uh, essentially Stray, Forspoken, and then I'm trying to think. I think there's a few others, like the Chrono Cross, or yeah, Chrono Cross remake. There's a few other games too from Japanese studios. But Forspoken just got 20, delayed, yeah. didn't it? 
Yeah, Force Spoken got yeah. delayed until like the fall. So yeah, so I'm like, and they just did a, a, a and then Ghostwire Tokyo that's coming out in March as well. But they just did a, a, a like a gameplay and and kind of a deep dive on that game too. So I really don't know how much time they can spend in any of those games. I think it's Babylon Fall. That's the one game. Sorry mm. for the Final Fantasy spinoff, which nobody seems excited about. So I don't know if they're going to do a whole lot in those games. I hope they don't. I hope we get new news, and hopefully, Mark, I'm hoping our friends at Capcom show up. And they I talk was about just gonna say Street Fighter. Yeah. Street Fighter Six. We're gonna get new more news in summer. Maybe we'll get something else, a tease or something like that mm. because of Sony and their relationship. We haven't heard much about the next like Resident Evil like remake right. or proper Resident Evil, so that we might get some of that. Um, there's rumors about Konami potentially having a backdoor deals with Sony to get some IP. Hmm. all these things joseph moran is going insane thinking he's gonna get something uh i don't know um but i'm hoping we get some new announcements not just refreshes um but they aren't gonna do hardware or vr announcements so sean naya sorry bud nothing for you with that game wise you might get something but maybe something you don't really care about because i'm not sure if any of the games they announce with a japanese flair Hmm. will be for you and that's been a big pushback on Sony. It's like, oh, you're abandoning Japan. What well, could be cool, Mark? And when you eventually get a PS5, mm-hmm. um, we have Astrobot. And if we get another Astrobot game that is both for PSVR and a standard, mm-hmm. those games are amazing. They're kind of like the Kirby of PlayStation platformers. That would be so awesome because Team Asobi is a PlayStation dev- or Sony uh, d- Japanese developer for Sony. They're so well loved now because of that new game, the VR experience. That could be cool if they tease something there. So that's my take. I think we, we may get a Capcom announcement. We may get a Konami announcement, and we potentially could get a Team Asobi announcement that does that game. Any thoughts, Mark? No, I think yeah that. <sighs> Capcom was the one that jumped out to me that, that I, I, there's been so many rumblings about, like you said, Resident Evil and, uh, and Street Fighter that when they said they were going Japanese uh, developer, I thought that maybe something from Square, like you said, I think you kind of summed it up pretty well of what to expect from this. But uh, yeah, I'm, as always with any kind of state of play or direct or one of these kind of showcases uh you want something new you want something exciting um so many games have been pushed back so many games have been delayed so many there's constantly those stories that it's it's uh nice to look forward to things and nintendo just i think knocked it out of the park a couple weeks ago with their first direct this year so let's see sony come out swinging Absolutely. And Sony's released a lot of games so far this year. They've had a couple of directs and things like that. Gran Turismo is getting great reviews and all those games. So, I mean, they've they've had a great beginning of the year. Sony has lacked kind of like the big games at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. They've had like releases in the year. What we haven't heard of is Xbox is so quiet right now. It's like, we don't know what's coming. We don't know when they're going to show up again. I think they've had to push back so many things that I think they're going to be like Sony was last fall. Like they're just... They have to go a little quiet because there's nothing, for whatever reason, nothing really in the pipeline. Like Xbox has made such news out of their big acquisitions and far down the line kind of things. But I don't think any of that's going to pay dividends for a little while. So I think this year on the Xbox side could be, I'm thinking it's going to be a quiet year. Wow, it's so crazy. Maybe we'll, hopefully what we'll hear, Mark, is they're going to dip big into third-party, like, Game Pass exclusives, which Mm -hmm. would be cool. I mean, I'd love to play some free games that are big on Game Pass because we haven't got all the huge, like, announcements. We've got Guardians of the Galaxy, which by all means, pick that game up on Game Pass in the next couple of days because it's awesome. Um, But beyond that, there's been just little drips and drabs. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting year. It's very quiet. We haven't heard much about E3 yet, but we're going to hear that soon. We're three months away, Mark, from E3. Mm -hmm. So hold your horses. It's it's getting real close. Yeah. So you know what, folks? Hold your horses because we are ready to get our visors out. Oh, see that, Mark? I'm ready to go. I see oh, it. my goodness. And yours would look better because it's white. Um, I'm a little jealous about that. But, yeah, we're going to talk about it's the funny, world I was of like, I wish VR. this came in a black model. <laughs> yeah, uh, white is not great. 
yeah, white is not great, although mine has cloth on it. Why would you put cloth on any device that's going to oh, be yeah. near you and getting some sweat on it? It's gross. Right. Right. Yeah, cloth doesn't clean. So, um, yeah, it's weird. So I have the Quest uh, version 1. I got it in... I guess February 2020 when it was fairly new. My son was Jones in for it. He put towards it. It was the, we, we splurged on the 128 gigabyte model, which was, I think it was 500 bucks. I think cause it was 400 and then you had to pay an extra hundred bucks for the extra four gigs. Um, my version is, uh, you know, th- that was their initial foray into a, uh, a, a, basically a tetherless VR system that was deemed not a piece of trash. <laughs> it wasn't requiring your phone being in there. It was, and it was getting wide support. And mm-hmm. I think Facebook at the time took a hit on the, the hardware uh, for cost to get it into everybody's hand. And it was wildly successful. I believe it's the number one VR platform today. Um, wow, and at this, shot. yeah. And at this point, there's really only a couple of VR uh, platforms worth mentioning before we kick this off. And that is, MetaQuest, MetaQuest, I guess is what we're calling it now. There are two yeah. versions. I don't think you can get the old one, but you can get the the, the second one uh, fairly cheap. Two fifty is your entry point. Awesome that you get it. There is also then uh, we have the uh, Valve Index, which is the opposite end. High end PC required, high end entry point for like twelve hundred bucks. We've got. There's probably some other ones out there that are like more of the. There's Windows actually has this like. AR VR model that you can get mm-hmm. that supports windows that are, you can get entry points from HP, different things like that. They're fairly good, but it's just like the supports a little awkward. They only support PC st- stream gaming and they require a PC. Um, so that's kind of where we stand. And the cool part about quest, it supports kind of a hybrid approach because you can connect to a PC and access a steam library of PC VR games, which I've done. And Mark, my version requires either a cable or using windows desktop virtual desktop, which is not the ideal thing. Right. But the cool part about quest VR two, they dipped into a wireless connection that require that uses what I think high speed Wi-Fi or something like that. That works even better than a cable. So you can have the best of both worlds if you own a gaming PC, which you don't, Right. but still, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, for me, it was the wireless approach and I just want something contained and, and uh, you know, not to mess with the, the PC side of things. And, and, and for that, I'm, I'm very much enjoying it. Uh, when I said quest two is the, the leading VR system. Um, I just read something from PC gamer. So quest two is now the headset of choice for 46% of steam VR users. So with that, this is people tethering to PC. Mm -hmm. So it cuts out, you know, people that are just playing like I am the, the, the quest, uh, and also cuts out stuff like the PS VR, I believe, but it's a pretty good indicator of like, that is the like 46% market share that is is wild and i'd love to see their actual like like straight up market share um it's it's crazy yeah at one time playstation vr was the leader because it really was an entry point where quest wasn't there yet because Mm -hmm. if you owned a playstation it was 400 bucks for the headset and it was an easy way in versus needing a high-end PC. So that made sense. And we are, you know, I don't want to neglect that audience. Sean Nias owns a PlayStation VR, loves it. I've never tried some of the games it has. I've used PlayStation VR. It's got a great screen. It's very comfortable. So there's like mm-hmm. the two things, but it's kind of held back by other technology, meaning the wands and things like that. Whereas the Quest really nailed a lot of cool things. Mm-hmm. So one of the cool things that the Quest does, Mark, and we can get into this, it is has a cool almost like an AR mode where it uses external cameras so you can see your horizon in your environment so you don't run into things. And you then mark your perimeter, which mm-hmm. makes it very cool. It's got a great intro, which everybody loves. Everybody loves the intro for the quest because it's very fun. It's very simple. You do a little dancing, do a little firing, you throw some paper airplanes, fun stuff like that. And you mark your territory so you don't run into things 
or hit your camera and it always tells you when you're getting close. So very user friendly. Um, it doesn't require any external cameras. It doesn't require like the dongles for the, the index. It actually requires you like mount cameras and things around your room. It's, it requires a big space. You're still tethered. Um, and the good news is PlayStation is going to simplify with VR2 with one wire and eventually Kamar. And they're going to they're gonna basically take a lot of the cues from uh, Quest, which is a lot of those cameras on the outside. It's going to use, it's going to like virtualize your fingers, which did you know that was a thing, Mark? Like it would actually know your fingers. You can so th- that's an experimental feature right now on the Quest Two, yeah. is uh, is being able to use hand controls. I've dabbled with it a little bit. I still definitely prefer a controller because I do find it a little wonky. Apparently, there there are games that that use hand controls and they're getting updated and kind of learning a little bit more. So that's why it's an experimental feature right now. Uh, I, I don't find it quite as accurate as just being able to point and pull a trigger with a controller, but um, it, there, there's some interesting stuff. Uh, I, I really, I love that path through feature that you were talking about, like drawing your perimeter, but also with a toddler running around uh, on the quest. If you, if you double tap the side of the quest, it instantly turns on those oh, cameras. I've never used that. I have to check. I think I'm you have to that's turn that quest. on. Okay. It's, it's in the settings and it, it, I forget what the settings call, but you turn that on in like the, the guardian mode or whatever. And you actually just double tap on the thing and the cameras come on and you can kind of see what's going it's on. In so bla- is it still in black and white on the, still in on black the quest too? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, you have to do watch out because pets and small children. Yep. who are not in control yep. of their environment. They don't know what's going on. They just run wherever they want. So you don't want like a, a like the Wii, like Wii and the Wiimote and the TV kid getting hit by accident. And you have to explain to everybody what happened. Like I was using VR. That's why that happened. It's, Finn, it's kind of an Finn awkward situation. Almost got smoked by Loren playing Fruit Ninja. <laughs> like it was a me screaming like, watch out. And her, because she was kind of swinging the swords like a little low, and he was like kind of playing over, and then came tearing through the room and uh, directly towards her. So it was kind of like me screaming, like kind of stopped him for a second, and also let her kind of raise up the hands. And uh, it was it was it was a close one. If I wasn't paying attention, he probably would have got punched in the face by a controller, and uh, that would not have been awesome for the first week yeah. of the quest. But it's, uh, it's, it is a, it's a funny, it's a funny thing you have to think about because it's like you normally wouldn't, but yeah, you mm-hmm. are. And one of the scary parts is if you place well, scary games, it's great for scary games because you feel like you are enclosed and it, it kind of, it does a really good job of like getting all of the bright light out of your area and mm-hmm. you feel like you're kind of secluded. So it can be creepy doing quest by yourself at home alone might not do great things for feeling secure in your environment. <laughs> yep. It's uh it it is super immersive. Like I said with the games that I've been playing, like the walkabout mini golf is is incredibly immersive because you can literally kind of like bend down and look at the lay of the ball or look at how the stage slopes or look around the environment. There's hidden balls in each one of these stages. So you find like it's a different color ball or a ball with a little uh, Jolly Roger symbol on it or a ball that looks like a globe or whatever. And you find them hidden through the stages. But like I found myself instead of the, the smart thing to do would be just to stand in one place and teleport yourself in the game, which you can do just like any other VR game. A just, smart thing, Mark. That's the smart thing, Todd. Yes. Me being not the smartest all the time uh, decided to get up and walk around these stages. And, uh, I'm very lucky that Finn's small little, uh, toy table was there. Cause I would have walked directly into the wall <laughs> because I was looking for one of these stupid balls and I'm looking around the stage and I'm walking around and like, I don't know if I didn't draw my perimeter enough. I kind of like drew it up against the wall, which was dumb because by the time it notifies me, I'm already walking into the damn wall. So I kind of hit my foot on the table and was like, oh, what was that? And took the headset off and was like, oh, I was about to just like straight up face plant into the wall. Like no hesitation. This wall right behind me, right over there. 
that that one it's, right there. It, it is, um, it, you know, and we don't want to scare people away. There are w- ways to protect yourself. Oh, you absolutely. really yeah, should. Yeah, exactly. Don't be dumb. Pick the good space. It, it accounts for your space you have. So you mm-hmm. don't need a huge room, which is nice. I, what it does is just limits how much you can free move, but you can teleport. You can move directly as you want. There's, there's even most of these games play in couch mode, which sets yes. a perimeter up just a, like a circle around your couch. That's very, or where you're sitting on your couch, which is also like the home place where you can like select your games and stuff. You can bring your couch into that, which is really cool. I haven't done that either. Like That's I crazy. scanned, I scanned like the, the told it where my couch was, like where oh, the cushion okay. started and the other one. And it puts it in there, like in your space station or in your little geodesic dome or whatever. Oh, that it, that ship! By the way, that that ship, the the they, that was not available at launch because oh, at first you locked in. And you're like you're part of like almost like a crib, like you know, it's you're in a house and you can walk around. There's like an outdoor. But when they added the ship, that is cool. That so is cool. so the cyberpunk place. Uh, that's the, oh, I haven't tried that one. Thing. Oh yeah, that one's cool too. Oh it's wow, like Cyberpunk City or something. Yeah, it's, it's that's it's neat. neat. I'm glad they're just uh, expanding some of those options so cool. because you know, when I was in the ship, I'm like. I told Logan, I'm like, you got to see this. Just, just added mm-hmm. this. So yeah, it's, it's so neat. And there's so many cool things. I mean, another thing, Mark, the media watching, you can watch YouTube videos, yeah. movies, those experiences, wearing it, wearing your headset because it's immersive. It's like a, it's like the biggest screen you've ever had in your life. And um, I did use some of the, the hand controls for controlling um, some of those things, Mark. It's nice not to have the controllers in your hand and just like pinch and zoom or pinch and move, which is what a lot of it is. It's like pinch to select and then move is pretty easy. It's pretty well done, not for gameplay, but for uh, interacting with the screen, kind of like the old days with connect. Yeah. Yeah. On, on the video side, I've watched, uh, it was like a planet earth type documentary kind of thing going like flying through rainforests and over uh, safaris and stuff. Uh, And the other one was, um, I was a wingsuit gliding, Mm. which uh, I, you know, you think, if something's going to make me motion sick, it's going to be being inside like the helmet cam of some dude wingsuiting over a, a mountain. And uh, I just thoroughly enjoyed that one. And then Star Wars made me kind of like, oh, I'm getting a little dizzy here. Uh, so I don't know what to tell you there. But uh, but yeah, even the video stuff is is really cool. And you have to watch like how far you turn your head because most mm-hmm. of it's like, uh, like 180 degree video. Yeah. The field of views not, can, can be a little quite, bit big. Yeah. yeah. Um, I kept noticing that one with, with the, the, uh, the planet earth type thing. Cause I wanted to look around cause it was like, almost like, uh, like Soren, if you've been to like Disney world mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was almost like that experience where you're kind of like flying over everything. There are a couple of the, like you're on the ground, but for the most part, you're flying over trees and over this, whatever. And so I kept looking all around, but like I kept noticing that like black wall on, on the side. And it's like, ah, oh, that's killing this immersion a little bit, but it's still so, so cool. Um, I've yet to experience a concert, but there is a Foo Fighters concert that I really, really need to go to. Um, it's, it's so cool. It's, it's, it's such a different way to experience things and one thing i want to ask is do you think vr is the the future of gaming or do you think it's it's always going to be a novelty like do you think this is going to get to the uh i don't know if you watch upload on amazon Pro oh upload's great or love yeah, it can't wait yeah. new season starts friday uh, we I need to actually watch the more than the, 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 I've only watched two episodes, Mark. So oh, I, God, come I know on. I've got to, I know, I know I'm, I'm just proving Charlie, right. Totally watches a couple episodes and we, never gets uh, back to it. I will. We Might just be 10 watched years it later. all start to, fi- start to finish uh, season one over the, the weekend the, while we were not feeling. Is like it the peeing scene? It just made oh me laugh. God, that was the funniest the, thing. So good. Just, yeah. The yeah, funeral so where you're watching your own funeral. It's like, really? Yeah. That's what we're doing. Interacting yeah. in your own funeral. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so weird. So, yeah. Uh, but like that, like ready player one, like, is that, Oh yeah. Is that the, the, the point we, we get to where it's, it's that kind of thing. Or do you think for at least a little while, this is going to be like a, a novelty fun thing to be like, you know, show this to your friends or here, play some beat saber or here, do this or do that. Um, but you know, gaming for the most part is going to stay PC console. It's, it's really interesting because I know 
people's relationship with Facebook is or Meta, whatever it's called, um, is is a it's a hard sell, right? It's like, oh god, I don't like right. them, but some people like them. But if any company is going to drive that, I guess broad entry into that. It's going to be a company like that, a Twitter or mm-hmm. something like that is definitely on the zeitgeist. It gets out to people and they've got a broad audience and they've got unlimited pockets. So I think because of that, you've seen the commercials for it, uh, uh, highlighting like certain areas that are like universal to people working out, working out with a, a meta quest is fantastic. I've tried Supernatural. Mm-hmm. Mark, just try Supernatural. You're working out in these beautiful vistas and it's like Beat Saber, but it's more yep. focused with a trainer and it's phenomenal. And I think those I, type of – oh, go ahead. No, I, I cannot get over – because it adds your Facebook friends or suggests your Facebook friends, I cannot get over the amount of people that have a Quest 2 that mm-hmm. – and maybe this is just me being uh, prejudiced or something. But like I would not have guessed some of these people. Like my uncle has yeah. a Quest 2 and I, I talked to him and I was like, when? Why? What? And he was like, we love it. He and his girlfriend like do the supernatural and workout and all this kind of stuff. And then like a woman at work has one that like I wouldn't have thought played anything more than like doodle jump on a phone once. Like just not the type of person I was expecting to jump into some gaming stuff. And she said like she never plays games, but like she does the workout stuff on on Quest and does yoga and and this kind of stuff. And it's like, holy crap. And like it's it like the friends list is a lot broader than I expected yeah. when I bought the quest. I expected like you and a few other people. Like I knew Loren's brother has one like gamers. I expected this to be kind of a gaming focused thing. And uh, it's, it is like, it's a broader audience than I expected for those kind of scenarios. Like, su- what, what, you know, like it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I think you need something like that to really build that broad base. For gaming, I still think there's a lot of pushback on it as a gaming experience because gaming is not just short experiences, it's long experiences. So that will be a hard thing to put Mm. something on your head, battery, fatigue, sweating, all those things are just like, "Uh, do you really want that? So I think gaming isn't going to be the end-all be-all for VR, but I think it's going to be all a really important element to bring in new experiences because you can only go so far with the controls and the console you've got today. So I think that type of experience can really do some really cool things when you add in those really cool elements of interaction. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Mark, I'm getting ready to buy a house and how cool it would be for me to put on a strap on my headset and get a virtual tour of a house without actually having to go to the house and deal with mm-hmm. other people or things like that. Or I want to see the Louvre or I want to go on these cool experiences. I want to go to a concert, but I don't want to be around a billion people and have to worry about if I pee, is somebody going to take my spot or is somebody going to punch me in the head? I mean, all these cool things you can do on that. And I think ultimately those are what draw people in, but mm-hmm. the barrier is only going to get dropped when you make it less intrusive and you can bring in other people. So whether it's like more goggle-like, less battery intensive, things like that, I think it'd be cool. Obviously, Apple has a play potentially. What are they going to do? AR, VR, like actually using your environment, including mm-hmm. virtual reality plus augmented reality. There's so many ways they could go after this technology mm-hmm. that it's going to be interesting. But to your point, the fact that it's already gotten people we didn't expect already and the fact that the quest is so easy to pick up, take to a party, or take to hang out with friends and just say, experience it, enjoy it, have a good time. I'm going to take mine to work. That's what I always wanted to do. We're mm-hmm. getting opening up. Things are getting better. We're going to have connections with employees. I'm going to take mine in and just let people have a good time. And one of the cool parts, Mark, that you, we haven't even talked about is you can cast I was just going to mention that to a screen so people can actually see what you're watching or the Mm -hmm. dumb thing you're doing it's a little bit funky at times but it's just chromecast it just goes to a device a roku uh, i think maybe even apple devices have it so you can cast to it potentially it's it's, uh it's tough to do on an apple device you have to use the the oculus app so it only goes to your phone and then if you want it to the TV uh, so then you screen have to mirror s- to, to screen mirror which okay. uh I tried it was it worked we were able to watch my brother do some beat saber stuff it was fine 
It wasn't an ideal experience. I am going to try it using my MacBook. Okay. Because apparently you can use like just the Chrome browser and there's a website to go through to that that hooks it up that way or something like that uh and then i could just plug that into hdmi instead of like double casting basically yeah, yeah. um yeah so there, there are ways but it's so much fun to be able to like watch and see what the people are absolutely are doing. yeah and, and there's easy. so many there's really cool game experiences too where it incorporates one player in vr and one player uh, uh stop stop talking and no one explodes i think it's the one game mark that i recommend for you it's basically okay. like there's a bomb and someone has instructions and you have to tell that one person how, what to do. And they're kind of discerning how to dissemble a bomb. It's a great gaming experience. And typically it's a That's one awesome. person with a laptop and people with printing out instructions, but with somebody in VR doing it, that could be a hot a hoot. So I think there's opportunities for gaming ultimately with somebody using it, but also people playing with the character. So I heard, uh, Acron yeah. is a good one with that. It's, uh, okay. Like acorn, only a little letters yeah. flipped. Uh, so the the person in VR plays a tree, and everyone else uses their phone and their squirrels trying to grab your nut. Uh, oh yeah, trying. I've heard about that game. Mark, sentence. are you going after my my nuts? <laughs> I just yeah, I just said the words. Everyone's trying to grab your nuts, and I had to stop myself because uh, that's a wouldn't sentence. be your first time, Mark. From what I understand, well, that's you know that yeah. Um, we all have a past, but, uh, that, that's, um, a thing that, that, and apparently that one works. Um, so I've heard people that the, the woman at work, uh, apparently was playing with some people over like FaceTime. So oh. she had her computer set up on FaceTime because it's more fun when you can actually hear the people and sure. talk and whatever. Yeah. So, uh, she had someone in VR and then other people through like a FaceTime call that so I mean obviously with this kind of scenario you need multiple devices because you can't yeah. FaceTime on the device yeah, that's that you're weird. playing with. Yeah. So it's, it was quite the setup. She said it's easier if you have several people in the same room. But she said it like it did work where I think the person with like everyone was playing on their phone, but then you had like an iPad FaceTiming to a computer, face like it was that kind of setup, right? She said that was a lot of fun. So I, I need to pick that that game's on my wish list. Uh, my growing wish list because there's so many darn games available for this thing. But, oh yeah, um, there's lots um, of free games. Um, yeah. Sometimes there's bundles, Mark. So I'll continue to like tell you when something's free so you can yeah. enjoy it. There's bundles that, that are awesome. Is, is awesome. Yeah, it's great. So there's a lot of every single day. A lot of cheap deals. There's right now. I think you get you know that that game you mentioned is ten bucks. The the yeah. the walkabout mini golf. There's lots there. There's lots of different options to play. There's really cool stuff you can do, um, and it's just. This is emerging technology that we're just at the beginning of. So, um, I mean, if you if you're curious, by all means, it's 250 bucks. The fact that that, that mm. quest getting in, entryway is so cheap, and you can just enjoy it. Um, and then we have obviously the PlayStation VR two is coming out as well this fall. So I'm not sure if PC VR gaming specifically will exist going forward just because the point of entry what you need with pcs the hardware is really expensive but a quest with pc gaming is definitely doable and i'm mm -hmm. i'm very jealous mark about the quest 2 because they've done some really cool things to improve that hardware made it cheaper made it really better in some ways so um that's my only frustration because i'm like oh, i bought too early so early regret yeah but uh yeah. you you benefited from it's cheaper and better yeah uh and to that point, yeah, it's, it's. I know you mentioned Apple before, but the rumblings right now is that they're eventually working towards some sort of AR system that's basically just like glasses. But that's so many years away that right now they're working on a VR AR hybrid that I've heard rumors that's going to cost up to like three grand and is more developer focused and professional sure. focused and that kind of stuff. So, like, it seems that there's some companies that aren't even aiming for a consumer product at this point where I think Facebook's onto something or Meta's onto something with get that cheap barrier of entry. Like you said, like it's, it's almost just like, why not just try it? Like if you're interested in it, it's almost one of those things that I'm not saying don't think about it. Cause I obviously thought about it for like a year of like, Oh, I could spend this money on something else or, Oh, I could do that. Or I could, you know, whatever. But like, end of the day, like it's, it, there, there's a lot more expensive 
ways to to spend your technology money and entertainment money and uh and the experiences on this and we've been a lot of focused on gaming and stuff like that but like just the experiences on this are really really cool like yeah it's 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 neat yeah and there are lots of accessories you can get too because some people complain about like sweating things like that you can get cool right. different face shields uh there actually is a battery backup you can put in that'll add more battery that actually mm-hmm. balances out the headset you can do different things to uh charge it if you want to um like i said if you get experience uh motion sickness the c-bands there's a variety of things you can do and that's really cool because um you can customize it it's uh, and there's a, the really a, a good uh, a group of opportunities to look into customization as well. So mm-hmm. um, I've enjoyed. Uh, I've got a couple different face shields. I got a case for it. Um, and that was the first thing I ran yeah. out and grabbed a case like a couple of days after I bought it because I, I first I just bought it because I didn't for whatever reason I didn't picture myself taking it places i kind of mm-hmm. figured this was going to be like a console i set it up in my living room and i know it's it's wireless but i didn't think it it moved too much past my living room and like the first couple of days like i was transporting i took it to my parents house to show my brother and i put it back in the box that it came in i was like this is not ideal so i instantly went out and got a hard case for it but like to yeah there's so many accessories and stuff you search on amazon quickly and it's just there's so much. Yeah, see my, this is my case. It's pretty simple. Yeah, opens yeah. up, holds everything. Super duper easy. Yeah, it's great. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I've had mine for two years, and I continue to go to back to it, and I'm going to get back to it. I've got games I want to play. Uh, we'll continue to talk about this, Mark, because we'll have someone to talk about VR stuff. Yeah. This is very fun. Very cool. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, let us know your thoughts on VR. Are you interested? Questions? Let us know. Um, obviously, Sean Nias is exciting about PlayStation VR uh, 2, and there's questions about that. Games will come forward, but that system sounds awesome, but I'm guessing that's going to be a little bit higher end. So there's going to be something for everybody at every entry point for VR. So that is it, Mark. So tell people where they can find you in the world of video gaming. Well, you can find me at uh on on xbox and switch at canardian uh you can find me on oculus if you add me as a facebook friend so uh i don't know if can you just add oculus friends i think you can do that can't you maybe they've changed their weird entry points there could be there could be something i will look that up for next time um but maybe if if i can share the profile i will in our discord chat maybe we'll get something going on there yeah uh, but you can also uh you can find me on our, our discord facebook and uh on instagram twitter twitch and tiktok at the underscore canardian very very good my friend uh on twitch or sorry on twitter at tiaxtra for my ramblings uh at twitch i mean twitch at spartion 1998 I stream there. Very cool. Not very often. Uh, and on video gaming uh, platforms, uh, Spartion 98 on Xbox and Switch, Spartion 1998 on PSN, and Todd Oxtra on Facebook slash Oculus for if you want to play with me. Because I've never done online with people. I would really be interested in doing that. We got to jump in some some Horizon Worlds, I think. Just even hang out. Perfect. We could probably record a podcast in oh. virtual reality. That would be so cool, Mark, and we would look like fools, but we'd have a great time doing it. Well, we got to do some tests with this and, and see oh what, we can, what we can pull Just off. Just even some I like poker and VR yeah. would be great. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. So uh, if you are interested, we'll give all of these things a try. Why not? We're adults. We have unlimited time and energy, right, Mark? <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> My voice is definitely yes. telling that exact story right now. Absolutely. It is late, folks. We need to end this podcast. Hopefully you had a good time. We did indeed buy the NFT behind me for no money. Just download it from Konami. Uh, there you go. That is your PSA for today. Well, as always, Mark, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us on this uh, voyage. We're going to have a guest next week, so look forward to that. And with that, folks, I will say, remember, it's always better to game together. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. 
If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server, or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.